Hello and welcome to the next part of the JavaScript challenge. So today we're going to be doing curry. And if you haven't seen functional programming, I have done something like this, I think. Um, I actually took a functional programming class a while ago in OCaml, and that's when I actually learned Python, and you did something like this. And so basically what curry does is it takes a function that you has some parameters. So like, let's say this, the sum three takes three parameters and you would call curried on it. But the way it works is if you're not given enough parameters, you kind of have to like keep taking more parameters. And so there's this example, C sum, where essentially, you know, you would call C sum on one, you'd realize I don't have enough parameters here. Then you'd call that whatever that returned on two. Then you'd call that whatever that returned on three. And finally you have enough parameters. And they do want you to add the functionality that you can call it in any order or not in any order, but you can do things like this as well. So they want you to handle things like that, where you don't have to pass them in one at a time. You can pass them in multiple arguments at a time. Okay. So essentially you're just checking, do I have enough parameters for a function to actually call that function? And I'm going to show you two ways you can do this. One is intuitive, reasonably intuitive. And one is, I mean, it works, but like, it's pretty hard to understand in my opinion. And it's also like one of those, it's a cool trick, I guess, but like if you can't really code like that, like it's going to be pretty unreadable code, but yeah, it's like a cool functional programming trick, I guess. And so we're not going to worry too much about, um, efficiency in this, uh, in this problem because it doesn't really matter. Like your inputs are pretty short and things like that. So we're going to more focus on like what I've been doing with the other JavaScript problems, more focus on the JavaScript concepts. And you can like, I think this problem isn't like a good test of efficiency. It's more just how the curried function works. That's what I'm going to be talking about. Okay. So we're going to actually make a closure and we're going to make an inputs array. And this inputs array is going to keep checking if we have enough arguments. So we're going to keep using this inputs array and we're going to keep reusing this curried function with this inputs array. And so what's going to happen is what we need to do first is we need to actually add the arguments into the inputs. Um, and you could do it a couple ways. I guess if you want it to be, yeah. So if you want it to be more efficient, you could probably just add them in like, yeah. So let's, let's, let's not be terrible about it, I guess. Right. So I think we could say like, let arg of args, something like that. We can just append them to the array. I was going to use a concat, but if you use concat in JavaScript, you're essentially creating a new array. So if you do like this, dot concat like one this essentially makes a whole new array and so if you have a bunch of elements for every concat operation it's o of n so you have like an n squared operation so let's not do let's not do that that seems even worse okay so let's just do a push so it's actually not going to be terrible efficiency i guess we did focus on efficiency a little bit okay so input dot push arg so we're essentially taking every argument and we're, we keep adding it to the inputs and now what we can do is we can just check if we have enough inputs. So that's pretty straightforward. And there is another trick here. So if we have enough inputs, so we can actually do fn.length, which uh, from what I looked at gives you how many arguments fn actually takes, which is also, you know, kind of weird, but yeah. So you can actually figure out fn.length will give you how many, how many arguments this fn actually takes. And so if we, if we have enough inputs, it's pretty straightforward. We can just call the function but we do have to one do we do have to one thing. Uh, so in a real curry, like when you call curry on something, you want to be able to call to call curry again. And so you want your inputs to reset once you call the function. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to save the return. We're going to save the return variable. So we're going to do constant res equals function called on inputs. And so we are using the spread parameter to spread out our inputs into like this. And now what we need to do is we need to actually reset our inputs. So with that, when we call curry again, we not might, we might not get enough arguments, right? So if you get something like this, but then you do this, if you didn't reset your parameters, this would keep adding the one onto your old stuff and you don't want to do that. Okay. So now we can return the result once we called it. Okay. And so our other case is pretty straightforward. So now that we actually appended our inputs, we're just going to return curried and curried is going to keep using the same inputs array and just keep appending and appending and appending onto the inputs until we actually have enough inputs. So the else case is just return curried here. Let's give that a go. And this is going to be like the more, yeah, the one that makes a little bit more sense. Okay. And so that does work. And yeah, it's, it, it would have been more efficient than just concatting the inputs. There's also some other stuff you can do that like 
I think a lot of things in JavaScript look cool, and it's like a fancy way of writing things, but, but the time complexity is terrible. So don't be confused, you know, like, don't just try to write things in a fancy one-liner way. Actually think about, you know, making it reasonable. Okay, so we have that way. Now I'm going to show you the recursive way, and the recursive way, honestly, is not super straightforward. But essentially, we have two cases. So our first case is pretty straightforward, right? So we, we have this initial case again, where the length of our arguments is longer than the function. So if that's the case, then this, this part is pretty straightforward, right? We can just return the function called on the arguments. But then we have the other case. And so what we need to do is we actually need to return a function that takes even more arguments and then calls curried on the whole thing. So we need, I'll repeat myself again. So we need to return a function that takes even more arguments, right? Like like when we have this curry one, two, three uh, here, like we need, so we have a function here. We need to return a function that takes more arguments and then calls curried on both of the arguments combined. So I think once it, once I said that way, it might make it a little bit clear. So we need to return a function that takes, what does it need to do? Things take more arguments, you don't know how many. So we can just call this like more args or something, right? And then it needs to return curried, so this same curried, called on all of those arguments. And so this is the recursive case. So we're going to call it on args, and you can actually do this. And this will essentially, it's like a double spread operator where it'll take these args, and then it'll take these args. And so this will recursively keep adding arguments, and then keep, so it'll, it'll recursively keep adding arguments and call curried. And then once you actually do have enough arguments, you know, once you have like args, more args, whatever, once this is true, then you will actually call the function on it. And so this is a recursive case. Definitely, you know, looks kind of fancy, but I probably wouldn't do this. I think the closure is more intuitive and time and space wise, uh, fine. Like, I don't think there's any problem with that. And just using, I feel like, I don't know, maybe I haven't used it in JavaScript, but when you, when you write things like this, it's definitely like not super readable. And so let's see what happens here. Yeah. And yeah, so it's actually even less efficient than the closure case, which is, I think, a little bit more straightforward. I think with a closure, you understand, like, yeah, we just have a container for our curried function. We just keep adding arguments. And then once we have enough arguments, we call function and we empty the container. I feel like that makes some logical sense where this is a little bit, you know, tricky. And I definitely uh, struggled with a lot of this when I was doing functional programming. It's definitely not intuitive. And I haven't used it in quite a while. Like, I think I was doing it when I was getting my degree. So. Hopefully that helped you guys out though, and this is the two ways of doing it. It's super uncommon, I think. I don't ever, I don't think I've ever seen like curried usage. So they do talk about like some usage in the editorial, but honestly, it's pretty rare. But just another day of the JavaScript challenge where you get to learn something new. And I think later on we're actually going to be using things that are happen a lot, which is promises. So look forward to that one, and I will see you in the next one. And if you like the video, then please like it and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.